as sweet strains of heavenly music land in one harmonious sound. So, so the members of Christ's body in endless unity are found. One in mind and one in spirit, one in touch and faith and love, one in name, O oh, precious union, like the angel hosts above, not like waves upon the ocean tossing wildly rolling high, or the tempest's great commotion as it sweeps across the sky. was their home. What did they do in the garden? Amen. Kind of makes me think, what do we do in our homes? The purpose that we have a home. I thought about Joshua. Amen. He had a great idea what he would do with his home or what he would do in his house. He said, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Well, the purpose of a home is for God to get the glory out of it for God to reign in it, for his presence to be in it, for the things of God to be taught in the home. Amen. The home is a very important aspect of marriage. So here it is, as I said, the home was designed for worship. All right. It's, uh, and as you see in the Bible, at a certain time, God a man would meet man. He would commune with man in that home, all right? That's where the relationship was established. You know, I was just thinking here, a lot of times after we get saved, your greatest test is not on your job. It's not at school, amen, or where you be. Your greatest test is in the home, amen. I find that to be true, amen. I, I, I think I'm pretty much on point. 
on that matter. It's in the home. And if you can stay safe in the home, you can stay safe anywhere. Amen. So it's so important, amen, that in the home, we all be one. Amen. We have the same mind. We say to have the same understanding. We walk by the same rule. And the only way we can do that is be governed by the word of God. You know, my mind goes to the scripture, and I'm going to turn there. You can turn with me to, is Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. And here it is, when you look at the home, amen, and what we should do in our home, amen, this is what God says here in uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 1, if you turn there. Now, these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whether you go to possess it. Oh, amen. Now, we know this was talking about the land of Canaan. Amen. But they were, that was their land. That was the home of the children of Israel. Thou sh that thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandment which I command thee thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life that thy days may be prolonged amen there might be some longevity here a lot of times in life life is cut short in the home and our children our lives are cut short it's because we don't do what the word of God said Verse 3, hear therefore Israel and observe to do it, that it might be well with thee, that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy father has promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all thy soul, and with all our might. Amen. First of all, we are to love God. We are to fellowship God. And we are to love him strongly. It's a strong love. Listen, it says, with all of your heart, not half-heartedly. Amen. We as parents, we are to set the example. If our children see how much we love God, it increases their desire to love him as much. You know, in the Bible, they use the term, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Why did they say the God of? Well, amen. What Abraham had, had concerning God, he handed it down. Amen. That was the legacy he left for Jacob. And likewise, Jacob to Isaac. So here it is. Amen. Even when Abraham was gone, when Jacob got in trouble, he was able to call on the God of his father, Abraham. See, that's where they turned the God of because he knew how Abraham, amen, lived before God. He knew that Abraham was a friend of God. Amen. He knew, he knew that Abraham had great faith with God. He knew that Abraham and God had a covenant between them. Likewise with Isaac. When he got in trouble, he was able to call on the God of his father, amen, Jacob, and the God of his grandfather, Abraham. So there you have it. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, rather the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, and the God of Isaac. And that's how it is. When we hand down the legacy of the word of the living God in our home to our children, when their backs are against the wall, when they have to make very, very important decisions in, that, in their lives, they're going to acknowledge the God of their parents. In many cases, the most what our children know about God is the God that they see in us. We are all, amen, image bearers, amen. And even though God is invisible, when we let him dwell in us according to the word, we make him visible. 
He is seeing through us. We are the host. We carry, amen, that image. Amen. And when we do that, the people uh, or our family is able to see God. Now, look a little more in, in Deuteronomy. Let me see where we're I'm at. Okay, six verse. We'll pick it up there. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Amen. I think about David. He said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Who's teaching our children today? We live in a time where we're so busy. We don't have time for devotion. We don't have time for prayer. Amen. We don't have time for the things of God. We take the children, put them, flop them down in front of a television set. That's it. The TV is doing, amen, uh, the babysitting. Then we wonder when it comes time to talk to them about the word of God, why you can't get through with the word of God. Well, then, first of all, somebody else been teaching them. Amen. You have flopped them down into the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Amen. And you got them eating from that instead of eating from, amen, the tree of life, which is Christ, the word of the living God, teaching them, amen, the things of God. It says here, it says, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And you should teach them to their children. A lot of times, oh, I ain't got time. I'm so busy. I got to work. Amen. But here it is. When we get in trouble. Amen. Or when we face adversity. Or when misfortune or whatever, some calamity come our way. That's the very God we seek to deliver us. Amen. Seven verse, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. Your house is your home. Amen. Amen. We ain't to sit around and let the TV teach our children. We're living in the age of fantasy today. We are living in the age, amen, where uh, knowledge has increased, amen, and people, I mean, rather Hollywood have all of these movies and uh, 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 fantasy and imagination. And especially now of late, you know, it's, everybody's almost a superhero, you know, when you, when, if you go to the movies. And then when you try to teach them about the man from Galilee, amen, who healed, well, uh, he don't, he, is, is he any good? Can he sling a hammer like Thor? And all that, those things you may think is not harmless, but let me tell you, it has an effect. It has a great effect on the imagination of our children. Amen. We need to teach them about Jesus first and foremost. Amen. But here it is, instead of, you know what I mean, spending time with them, we give them a little money or change or whatever, go to the movie or whatever. Then they go out there and their mind is filled with the pagan fantasies of Hollywood. But it says here in the seventh verse that thou shalt teach thy, teach them diligently unto thy children and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. When thou walkest by the day and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thine house and on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, amen, and to Jacob to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of good things. Amen. You know, we desire a lot. We want to be able to take care of our families. Amen. We want, you know, the blessings, amen, that God has given us down here. Well, if we want these things, we need to do what God says do. It needs to be done exactly like God said. 
put God first in our home. And see, back then, in the beginning, this has always been God's design. Amen. That he would have a relationship with man. He would be able to commune with man. I thought about how God walked in the cool of the day. Well, when I think of the cool of the day, I think of a Pacific time. You know, the cool of the day, usually most of the day has been hot, sweaty. You get home. Amen. And right in the evening time. Amen. That's a day you want to relax. But at that moment where you can now gather your thoughts and focus, you know what the Bible is saying? Focus, amen, on God. Amen. Gather your thoughts. Amen. So you can focus on God. Adam and Eve had a specific time. They worship God. Amen. Now, everybody's time might not be the same. But do you have a time? <laughs> Amen. For me, it's, it's just really good for me to get up real, real early in the morning. It's just, you know, sometimes, uh, I shouldn't say sometimes, most time, God wake me up about three. And I'm able just to get on the side of my bed and, and kneel down and, you know, have prayer and talk to God. You know, God starts my day early. Well, I look at what's on my plate because I have to be at work, amen, early in the morning, 6.30 to open up, and now I got something else on my plate, the broadcast in the morning, which started about 6. Amen. I'm not complaining. I love this. But what it is, he knows what we're going to do that day, what we're facing that day. Amen. So God, he sets a, a, a specific time. We need to give God FaceTime. Amen. We give a more time to Facebook than FaceTime with God. Amen. So he met them. He communed with them in the cool of the day. Amen. That was a period of worship. Amen. They were able to worship him. And not only worship him. They, they commune with him. They worship him. And they had fellowship with them. That's the reason why, amen, when Adam had sinned and went and hid himself, you know what happened? God said, Adam, where are thou? Now, it's, God knows everything, right? He knew where Adam was. Adam didn't know where he was. See, God was meeting him, no doubt, in the place he always have would come in the cool of the day to have fellowship. Guess what? Adam wasn't in that position. And a lot of times, amen, when we get out of the will of God, it's because we're not in the place, amen, that we should be. We're in another place, amen, the devil's place for the most part. The Bible says, give no place to the devil. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Having a place to talk with God. This thought comes to my mind. I want to share. Let's go and turn to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Amen. Talking about communing with God like Adam and Eve in the garden did. That is really such a blessing. And if we turn to Matthew, the sixth chapter, and, and just look at this, this thought here. Six and, oh. Okay. This here is coming from the Sermon on the Mount. And at the sixth chapter, about the um, fifth verse, listen to this right here. As Jesus was teaching, he said this. He said, and when thou prayest, thou shall not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. 
Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You know what? A lot of times, some of us may find it more easier to pray publicly. You know, amen. And we want to make sure even in our thought process, we get all the words right. We know what to say, amen. We know how to make sure we say in Jesus' name at the end. All right, and you know, and you know, somebody might pat you on the back, brother, that was a good prayer. But what is our prayer life in secret? What does God think of our prayer? Amen. As I said, I'll say it again, and I constantly drill this to the children here at school. Prayer is talking to God. And reading the Bible is God talking back to you. Well, what is the Bible? Basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible directs us and instructs us how, amen, we should have a relationship with God. Amen, how to talk with God. So here it is, Jesus is instructing them. He said, when you pray, in other words, this is how you pray. Um, uh, six verb, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. Now, he wasn't talking about a closed closet. No, sir. He wasn't talking about a closed closet. But he was talking about a secret place. Amen. Uh, uh, the closet, amen, where God is at. In the Jewish mind, this closet or secret place, it pointed to the tabernacle. Amen. That because inside of their tabernacle, the presence of God was enclosed. So when thou pray, enter into the, thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door. Notice it didn't say nobody else's door. Your door. Shut thy door. Sometimes that's just what we need to do. We need to shut everything out that is a hindrance. Everything that causes us to lose focus. And our thoughts should be solely focused on God. It said, and shut thy door. Pray to thy father. See, he makes it personally. He didn't say pray to the father. Pray to thy father. I, li I like that. Pray to thy father. You know, there's a term, I think it's in Galatians, when they use the term Abba, father. I, I don't really like using the term daddy. I know it's a personal term of endearment and an affection. But here it is, I understand. You know what I mean? But there's a time where God becomes so personal to us because he knows our down city. He knows our uprising. He knows exactly what's in our heart. Amen. He knows what's in our Thoughts. Amen. There's no secret that we can keep from him. So here it is. It's go when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father. I thank God for that this morning. I'm telling you, I'm getting a blessing from this. Which seeth in secret. And let's say, and he shall reward you, thee openly. Well, what do you mean with see if in secret? I thought about the high priest. Amen. When he would go into that second a room and he would have the censer full of incense swinging it. Amen. Going into that second room. How it would just fill the room which, uh, uh, which, with the smoke from the incense, which was a representation of the prayers of the saints. And it would be so cloudy in there amen he couldn't even see one thing about prayer amen prayer will cause you to pray and look for an outcome even though we amen can't see it prayer builds faith because we walk by faith and not by sight the bible said have faith in god because without faith it is impossible to please god for he that cometh to God must first believe that he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently. So here it is. You come to God in secret. 
with your prayer and as a priest because we're kings and priests. And here it is, God is there to meet you. And even though you don't see him physically, he sees you. You are burning incense. And your incense, the aroma of it, has filled the room. It has filled the very nostrils of God. And you're praying in secret. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see the relationship here? Amen. That's what the closet is. Amen. That is your time of fellowship, your time of communion, the highest state of worship. He said, and the father which seeth in secret. You think he don't see you? Oh, yes, he does. Shall reward thee openly. He will bless you, anoint you in such a way everybody will see the presence of God upon you. Moses went up into the mount. He was in the presence of God when he was receiving the law. And when he came down, his face shined just like the sun. Amen. Let me tell you something. Amen. Adam and me commune with God. Lord, help us this morning to commune with God. Seven verse. And but when you pray, use not vain repetition. I'm not going to go into that part right there. It's about 630. We're running out of time. And uh, I, I can't say I'm sorry for getting excited. There's something about the word of God that excites me. But here it is, Adam and Eve commune with God in the garden. In the cool of the day, they had a specific time. When do you commune with God? Come on, amen. When do you have time with God? Amen. I think about that song that says, along with God, amen. We need to be, spend that time. We can't make it through life without being, amen, in the presence of God. All right, I'll meet you here tomorrow. Amen, because then we're going to talk about what happens when, when man, amen, fell away from God. Amen. When he went and hid, amen. When he wasn't in the place of communing, when he should have been, amen. He was in another place which caused sin to enter into his life and, 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 and into the world. I thank you so much. Let's continue to pray for, amen, the ills of this planet, amen. Pray for our persecuted brethren and sisters, especially in other lands who are attempting to make a stand for Christ. Let's, let's pray for the church of God. Amen. Pray for souls, our unsaved loved ones, our relatives, our friends. And let's remember each other. And I hope you can meet me here again. God bless you. Amen. Upon